Hey there do-it-yourself technicians. Today I want to talk to you about internet protection with Kaspersky Safe Kids. Kath messaged me during the week to ask if I'd done an episode on NetNanny software. I hadn't, Kath, so here's an episode for you and everyone else out there who's wondering. Firstly, I ascertained that in this case it was for an Android tablet for a seven-year-old. I did some quick research on a few different ones, some of which I'll cover in the upcoming weeks. But the first one I want to look at is Kaspersky Safe Kids. I've been a fan of Kaspersky for many, many years, so I thought this would be a really good place to start. The product has two different facets, the parent and the child, but the app is actually the same app for both, which is handy. You can also manage the settings from their web dashboard. To simulate the child, I installed the app on this old Galaxy S7. It was the best Android device I had. Simply go to the Play Store and search Kaspersky Kids. I clicked install and waited while the app downloaded and installed on the device. I then clicked open and stepped my way through the slides that gave a brief intro to the product. I then agreed to the terms and conditions and the privacy statement. I then clicked to set this up for the child and was walked through all of the steps allowing access to various system features and location. I just simply clicked allow at each screen. This gives the app the ability to see what is happening on the device, allowing background use and managing phone calls and location, and then allowing control over other apps and being the device administrator, then allowing it to set accessibility features to monitor what is happening on the device. Next, you have to create or sign in to a Mike Kaspersky account, as this is what is used to communicate between the child device and the parent. I added this device as a child with a name of test and a birth year of 2005. This set a bunch of relevant restrictions for a 15 year old and the device was ready. The last screen gave some notes for parents as well as options to turn off or remove the app if required. I tried a few quick tests and found appropriate sites were allowed. And when I went to an inappropriate site, it was flagged as such, although I was allowed to continue due to the age restrictions I'd set. Installing the app on an iPhone for parental use was basically exactly the same, but without the need to set up all of the settings to allow access to the device. It was just a case of search for the app in the App Store, download and install, select parent, then log in to My Kaspersky and set a PIN. And later it allowed me to use Face ID to log in. Here I get a rundown of all of the alerts created on the child device. Access to forbidden apps, and an alert when the device had attempted to access an adult site. You can also manage the settings and see the alerts from the My Kaspersky website. So I logged in there and used that to set the age for the test account back to a seven-year-old. Now the adult website was blocked rather than just warned. In fact, this screen shows all of the differences between a 15-year-old and a seven-year-old as far as the Kaspersky settings go. There is still an option for the child to ask for permission to access the site if they believe they really need it. And that pops up an alert and a request on the parent device for approval. The parent app and website also have lots of notes scattered throughout about the best way to talk to your child, about how their device is managed, what is blocked and why. Maturity levels of kids differ wildly. So of course, use your parental best judgment. The dashboard also shows usage and apps, frequently visited websites, search terms, and the paid version will also show Facebook posts and friends, as well as the device location, which can be handy for locating a missing child or a missing device. It also allows you to set screen time controls, customize the web and app filters, and enable YouTube safe search. The premium version costs $19.95 Australian dollars a year which I think is pretty reasonable for the peace of mind provided. Question of the day. Have you used any internet protection or NatNanny software before? What do you like or dislike about them? Let me know in the comments down below. And if this video was useful, give it a thumbs up. Thank you. The Tech Doctor exists to help you become your own technician. Learn about the technology, protect yourself from the bad guys, and fix it when it breaks. If you're watching this on YouTube, there's some older videos you may not have seen before here and here, and you can subscribe to the channel by clicking down here, 
or our mailing list by clicking up here. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you on the next episode.